psychology and history major. <laughs> Health major. Medical biology major. A behavior and health science major. Psychology. A health science, but we had a concentration in OT in my undergrad. Sports and exercise science. I did psychology. I majored in interdisciplinary health. Applied psychology. Psychology. Kinesiology. Psychology. And marketing. My major was psych and I had a minor in human development. Psychology, uh, math, and child and adolescent mental health studies. Psychology, and then I minored in dance and I minored in chemistry. As kinesiology major, psychology. The media studies and production. Honestly, I don't know. What do you think? Were you okay. psychology? I love psychology. <laughs> I don't know how it helped me. <laughs> I think my psych taught me some of the facts that I needed. I had to be a proficient writer and reader. The understanding of how people's um, behaviors work and what motivates people. I think that having a science background um, definitely prepared me for the science-based courses for OT school. So my program was designed as like pre-OT, so it was a lot of like human biology courses and anatomy, but then also a lot of like social sciences, like psychology, so that was helpful. Yeah, a lot. Uh, yeah, it talked about human movement and biomechanics. I think in some elements it did, but I had to take a lot of prereqs because I went to a liberal arts school. I think it got me introduced to the medical field. We learned about exercises and the amount of repetitions that you want to do. We learned about met levels. Yes, because mostly because for Columbia, we have a huge emphasis on mental health and well, psychopathology. Definitely not. Definitely some kind of like exercise science or movement science or bio, psych too. That's what I did, but I would have liked some more elements of like um, exercise science. A lot of people I know, I think, majored in kinesiology and psychiatry, and I think from what I got that it was kind of helped them get involved in the field, especially psych if your school is really places uh, mental health as a priority, which our school does. Definitely like some courses like would have some psych related topics, so that helped when I was studying. Something more science based. I know psychology is science based, but you know what I mean? Something that requires more like human anatomy and maybe like kinesiology would be really helpful because I feel like I struggle with the classes that are more like that. But that's probably because I'm a psych major, so. <laughs> I took two years off uh, after high school to go learn at a Jewish seminary in Israel, but then I went straight from undergrad into uh, grad school. I took a gap semester, so I graduated in December and then started OT school in the fall. No, I didn't. I didn't. No. No. I did. <laughs> um, I actually worked at Columbia Medical Center in a molecular genetics lab doing some research on spinal muscular atrophy. I took two. My work as a rehab aide in a hospital. A few years off, actually, so I worked for a few years after undergrad um, in nonprofit management. Yeah, I took three years off. I worked for ZocDoc in sales. I was connecting with people who worked there but wanted to be social workers, so I thought, like, okay, maybe I should like go back into the field of helping people and I was like, no, I'm just gonna go to Thailand actually. So I taught English and then the kids they were down syndrome weren't getting help. So I was like, okay, I'll just go home and be an OT. I took gap years. Great story. <laughs> so I come from the Philippines and that's where I finished undergrad. And so within that three years, um, I moved from the Philippines to the US. And then I worked like a lot of odd jobs. I was a receptionist, I did nannying, babysitting, um, work at a preschool. Yeah. I took anatomy and physiology at community college and I worked. I did. I worked at a special needs school um, with kids who had uh, neurodevelopmental delays, mostly autism. It's called the Rebecca School. It's a great school. I took a gap eight months. <laughs> yeah. I worked. I kind of just took time for myself and um, just grew as a person. Yes. I took four years off. Worked, had a baby, lived life. <laughs> I do not work during OT school. Um, I think that that would be a lot with all of our schoolwork. I have a uh, work study position as a research assistant for one of our faculty. No, I don't work, but I do help run a nonprofit that I started. So that takes up a lot of my time fundraising and volunteering through it. Yeah. Do you want to elaborate? <laughs> Procrastination is real. But I, I do my work. No, no, I mean like the other job. Oh, do yeah. I work? Well. Yeah. <laughs>
No, I have a dog on Instagram. I do. I actually have a work study position. Uh, I am a social services coordinator, so I work with a nonprofit organization at Columbia, and we serve adult education students. I do not work. I only do OT school, <laughs> which is enough for me. No, I do not. I tried. Um, at the beginning, I actually got a job as like a barista at a coffee shop, and I was so excited about it, but. Um, I just felt like my priorities weren't like straight had I like continued to do the job. So I don't work currently. I don't have the time, I don't think. No, just to focus on just studies, it's a lot. I do dog walking kind of on the side, but I've only done it a few times. But I think if you are gonna work, having something that's really flexible that you can kind of make your own hours with is really important. No, I did not work. I knew that it'll be too difficult to be a student, to be a mom. Uh, no. I should though. I really <laughs> should because your girl is broke, but I feel like I'm from California and I moved here to New York City and I'm just trying to, you know, live my best life and school honestly takes up a lot of my time, but I mean, I do make time to volunteer and do fun things in the city. No, I anticipated that was going to be definitely challenging and require a lot of work. No, I don't think that it's harder than I anticipated. I think that it's hard, but... Um... I think it's a good challenge. No, but that's not to say it isn't hard. It's just like, I kind of expected it to be harder than undergrad anyways, so. It's just, it's about as hard as I thought it would be. Uh, no, it's about the same amount of work that I did in undergrad, so. Um, yeah, it is. Especially I'm coming from a different city. I'm from Chicago and now coming to live somewhere else. It was really hard the first year. Um, and you're just in graduate school, it's a whole different type of animal, so. Uh, yes and no. I think the content was pretty much what I anticipated, um, but I think OT school really requires you to be good at managing your time. I think OT school is what I expected. I knew it would be a lot of work, and I knew it would be interesting. No, it was easier than I anticipated. Do you feel like that's because you're a part-time student, though? I feel like it's because I'm a part-time student, but also, like, I don't feel as, like, pressured to be a straight-A student here because I'm already in school, whereas in uh, college, I just wanted to get as good of grades as possible in case I was going to grad school, um, so there's more pressure. Now it's like I just want to understand the information so I can be good at it, but I don't need to, like, get 100 on the test to feel confident. Yes, 1,000% harder. I have never cried like this much. No, I mean, it's kind of, I knew it was going to be hard. No, but that's not saying it's easy. I actually didn't think about it. I was just like, I'll worry about it when I get there. I guess I don't really know what to expect. Um, I think some parts of it are harder, some parts are easier. Um, overall, I feel like it's been a really good experience. I am doing the OTD. I don't think it should be required. I don't think it's completely necessary, but I do think it should be an option for people who do wish to continue their education. It's definitely a huge debate right now, and who knows what it's gonna be in the next like 10 years, but I like how they give us an option because it's so expensive, and um, I think people should have the choice. I am anti-OTD because it's just gonna make the profession harder to get into because you're an extra year of school, more money, and like I could barely afford to go to school for two years. Um, so it's cutting out a lot of people. I think it's good to have it as an option because if you want to research more or learn more in certain areas, I think having an OTD helps. Mm -hmm. But it's okay just to have an MOT, especially if you can't afford to go on. Honestly, I think it's whatever you're looking to do. I think it makes sense if you are really certain that you want to like teach or you want to um, be really involved in research. It makes sense to go straight into it, but I think it's something that I personally would assess later into my OT career if it's something that I feel like I want to do. I am trying to decide currently whether to get my OTD or not, and some people will say it's really beneficial and other people will say you don't really need it, but I think it comes down to if you like learning and you really want to have advanced clinical skills, go for it, but it's not necessary. Um, I'm leaning more towards keeping it in the master's. Like all the skills that we learn in the master's program and everything that is relevant to the profession is already integrated into the curriculum. So I feel like moving it 
to the OTD is kind of like, eh. I say if you have the money to go OTD, do it. It's hard to justify how much it costs because when you graduate from OTD or MOT, you have the same job afterwards anyway. So you'd make the same money, but you might be an extra tens of thousands of dollars in debt. I think having to answer all the emails. They are just like, I feel like my email has become the most like anxiety provoking thing ever over the last two years. For me, it's definitely um, trying to balance forced work, um, studying for exams, and in my case, commuting as well, which takes up a lot of time. I miss my friends. I miss like my dog. I don't know. I feel like I'm out of the loop with a lot of things, even like pop culture stuff. I have no idea what's going on. Um, but I feel like I'll just catch up when I graduate. The amount of time you're sitting in one classroom Day. Having to study for really long periods of time <laughs> because I have a really short attention span, so that's a personal issue. I'll be the early classes. The stress. It's hard to be in a fieldwork setting, like in the future when I'm doing physical disabilities. I feel like it's going to be hard to do something for three months that I don't necessarily want to do, but I know that it'll like add to my learning experience. Um, that's been the hardest part and just like being a student again and not like making money full time, just like on the side. I think like transitioning from like undergrad and like having like that three year gap where I can just like do whatever I want, like not have to do work outside of like actual paid work. It's kind of like difficult, but apart from that, it's really, it's not that bad. I think probably like the weeks that we have a ton of stuff at once. For me, it was how expensive it was. And that really depends on the school you go to. I did pick Columbia and it was the most expensive option, but- Ask you how you are, you don't just have to say that you're fine. It's, you're it's just really expensive. Probably all the group work. <laughs> that we're in the same classroom all day, every day. I feel like my least favorite was maybe getting unlucky with one like supervisor that I had for my field work, but other than that, it's been a good experience. Classmates. <laughs> I've really enjoyed being in a class with 55 people, and we get to go through everything together, and we're always studying for the same things. I like to think that I've grown a lot as a person in my time here. Maybe. Getting more exposed to different settings of OT. Definitely the student body. Everybody's very supportive of each other. Uh, my classmates. Fieldwork. Being around people who really like similar things to you. The people, really, and being able to grow as a person. Two things. Um, field work, I think, is just a really invaluable experience where you really learn what it's like to be on the job. Second thing would probably be the people. People here are cool. You're I met my gonna... girlfriend here, too. Yeah. So. Definitely the people that I've met. It sounds cheesy, but it's true. I met my boyfriend in OT school. <laughs> <laughs> and just being able to like now, like during the semester, work with children. Um, I am very passionate about working with kids and I actually want to become a pediatric occupational therapist. So just having like that experience this semester has really like made me more excited to start the profession. It's been really nice to have field works and like meet all the really great clients. And also just like, I think our group is pretty good and our group has fun. <laughs> Going to class and learning about what you care about. Just meeting the people I've met, living in New York City has literally been the absolute best. It's always been a dream of mine and it's just exceeded all my expectations. Meeting Crystal. <laughs> <laughs> Is that really your favorite? Yes! <laughs> meeting the best people, including Crystal. <laughs> so she's the best. Um, and just, I don't know, just meeting like a lot of people in general that share like the same values and Finally, just like learning what I've been wanting to do since I was 16 years old. I think older adults are pretty cool. Old people are funny. Very interested in hand therapy. However, I'm also keeping an open mind. Um, I'm actually not sure yet, which I think is like the beauty of OT school. You get to try different things and um, be exposed to new things. I don't know. <laughs> Probably like physical disabilities to begin with. I want to get like all my basic OT skills nice and honed. Mm -hmm. um, and then eventually I'd like to do my job. I have no clue. <laughs> I've loved everything I've seen so far, so it's been really hard to choose. Yeah, same. <laughs> uh, hands. Hand therapy. Adults and physical disabilities, but I'm very open to whatever is for me. I'm thinking about inpatient rehab mostly. Um, 
Um, I, Cause I worked there and I really liked that. I really like um, engaging with other disciplines and I kind of like brought everything around full circle. I'm thinking outpatient right now and physical disabilities and possibly going to get there. Right now I'm leaning towards physical disabilities, but I'm open to peace, with like mental health. I would work anywhere. I love OT. Pediatrics. And maybe like employee wellness. Peace. Currently a little bit undecided, but I've always wanted to work with pediatrics, but after I came here, I, I, I became more interested in like neuro-based interventions. Pediatrics. I want to do geriatrics, so working with older adults. Still undecided, but maybe pediatrics. 100% pediatrics. 100%. Everyone goes through grad school their own way, so don't let anyone tell you oh, this class is really hard or that class is really hard. Like, Depending on how you study, some things will be easier or harder and it's just going to give you like unneeded anxiety. Very good luck, socks. <laughs> <laughs> Shadow and OT, see what it's about, um, understand the difference between OT and PT, and just know it's one of like the best careers out there right now. I some list, I don't know what list, but it's good. Just that it's okay to go into OT thinking you want to do one thing, but then actually ending up in a totally different field with it. Just be flexible. You might think what you want is what you want, but it might change and uh, yeah, just think through it. Definitely do your research on schools and see if they're research schools or not, because that's gonna really affect like your course load. I would definitely try to um, shadow someone if that opportunity is available because I think I would have wanted to have more exposure. It's a little hard with OT because it's so, there's so much. There's, there's school, sensory gyms, there are hospitals. I kind of really research like what OT is and like what the difference is between other disciplines, um, especially like physical therapy. Um, you really want to make sure that this is something you want to do. Getting a lot of experience from volunteering and just emailing the OTs and asking them questions. Go for it. If that's what you want to do, you won't regret it. It's an amazing field with so many opportunities. If you really do love it, and I think that you have to do your hours before you get into it, if it's something that you really love, then you will really be fulfilled. But if there are other things that you feel like that you're interested in, I think that you should pursue those things first before going to grad school. Definitely to keep on working towards it because it will be worth it. And it's hard work, but it's worth it. Yeah, I think the biggest thing you just gotta do is be ready to be patient. Whoever you're working with, you really have to meet them at their level. And sometimes they're at a level where it's really difficult for them to just engage in like day-to-day -day tasks that that we're so accustomed to, like we don't even think about. I think try and shadow as many different um, parts of OT as you can, get experience, and if you think you're gonna like one, just like try it out, but then try other things out too. Um, and just really know that it's what you wanna do. Definitely shadow as many places as you can, because I feel, I feel like I only knew the pediatric side of OT, and I didn't really know anything about like say geriatrics or physical disabilities and I had no idea about mental health and are still very mental focus. So I feel like just try to get as much settings as you can and you know, figure out what you like and what you don't like. <laughs> do your research is what you should do. It's a huge commitment. So you gotta make sure that this is a field that you're comfortable with, you know about and like you set like realistic goals and expectations because let me tell you, you're not gonna be rich in this profession. <laughs> and that's really not the mo motivation of most of us going into OT school. So you really have to have your heart and your mind set on this decision. So good luck. If you made it up to this point, you're a real one. That is it for today's video. I just wanna thank all of my amazing classmates for participating in this video. And if you have any more questions, feel free to comment down below. I'll make sure to answer them. And yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe for new videos every Thursday.